Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested and it's time for another laser cutter project as I'm spending more time making things on my Glowforge these days and trying to get over my own mental roadblocks to designing vectors and using Adobe Illustrator. And the only way I can do that is to keep on making new things and iterating on that process. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you a project that I had made. It was a riser for a cutting mat that also doubled as a light box or a display stand. And that's what I've been using it a lot as and what I got the best feedback from you for. So I thought, why not iterate on that and make something that's a dedicated stand for some of the figures and collectibles I have here in my office. And I thought it'd be a good chance to explore different types of joining and piecing together laser cut pieces. As I've talked about before, laser cut assemblies kind of have uh, many oftentimes telltale signs of the manufacturing process because of the way they're designed, which is no fault of it. It's not a knock on it at all. It's just things that work and are reliable often are associated with uh, the way they're made. So for example, this is a very standard laser cut box and you can design and make these boxes almost automatically with web apps and websites. All you do is type in the dimensions that you want, how many of these tabs, how wide the tabs are, press a button and boom, they kick out a vector file that you can throw onto any laser cutter. And you know, while it's totally reliable and I really like it, it really has this finger joint, which you see in so many laser cut designs and which is fine. It's just a little samey in, in my preference. And so I really would love to explore a different way of piecing together these perpendicular pieces. And one of the things that caught my eye was this box design that was uploaded to the Glowforge forum from Polar Brain Freeze about a couple of years ago. And I added my own little cutouts here, but look at this box and how it doesn't have that telltale finger joint because it's not using finger joints. In fact, if you look at these corners, these corners have overlapping edges because behind these overlaps are actually slot joints. So while a finger joint connects corners like this, a slot joint connects corners more like that. And so the connecting point is hidden in the seam here. And what I really love about the design this design specifically is this lid here, which then kind of with this taper connects the corners. And I love this little accent, this upper lip here as well. And so I think I'm gonna take a riff on this. This design is completely free and I'll include a link to that forum post so you can check it out. But I think I'm gonna use this design as inspiration to sketch out what a display could be like and maybe iterate on it. And instead of just having one finger joint here, do it throughout the entire side, all four sides, because I love that this kind of almost looks like a fin, uh, like a heat sink, and that could be cool for a display. So right now I've already taken some time to do some preliminary sketches um, of what that could look like. And I think I'm gonna make it about five inches by five inches. So it's wide enough to support um, basically a sixth scale figure, 12 inches. That's about, yeah, it's about four or five inches right there. And I, of course, can stand diagonally. That should be no problem. But it's gonna be interesting to try to sketch out what it would be like to join so many of these pieces, interlocking pieces, to then make an acrylic display. So the only way we'll know if this works is if we try one and make one. So let's head over to Illustrator and get to designing and the laser cutting. So the way I'm thinking about this display stand, it's basically gonna be a wider and more squat version of this box design that I really like, uh, including the way that it uses the slot joints in the corners and the way that the sides intersect and then protrude. And then with that little bit of a lid that I'm all thinking about doing in acrylic or frosted acrylic. And while I have the SVGs for this box, I also wanna try recreating it myself because uh, there'll be different dimensions. And I'm also gonna try this thing where I'm uh, not only gonna have the slot joints for the four corners, but also also have what essentially is this uh, this matrix, this grid of interlocking panels that will give me um, this heat sink look. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create my uh, topper uh, and the platform because I know the dimensions of the box I want. I basically want this to support a five inch by five inch panel as the base. And then um, roughly based on my loose sketching, about an inch and a half height. Uh, which should be plenty enough to put some LED light strips on the inside, uh, as well as have enough space for sturdy support for all these interlocking panels. Now, this is exactly the kind of project I'm sure would make a lot more sense to design in 3D uh, because of the interlocking pieces. Uh, they have to perfectly fit. And in 3D, I could make sure that all the pieces do intersect properly and then uh, flatten it out and get the 2D SVGs uh, size for my thickness of material, 1 8 inch in this case. But uh, I'm not comfortable in that format yet, and I'm really using this as uh, an exercise in turning some sketches into, um, into a flat illustrator vector. And I really do enjoy the problem solving of designing something in 2D that will eventually be a 3D object that will have thickness and that will be built out three-dimensionally. A lot of this is just more practice with creating these shapes using the shape tool, basically a lot of rectangles that I then carve out by using the Pathfinder tool, overlapping shapes. Basically start with a rectangle, then create other rectangles or triangles, overlap them, and then carve them out so I get more irregular shapes and then joining them as well using the Pathfinder tool. And what's been very helpful is a lot of precision I'm using in the transform panel. So I get to move the shapes over very precisely by what I know based on my diagramming to be uh, the right places, as well as the align tool. And I can select multiple objects at once, select one as the anchor, and then align everything else to uh, basically the right, left, top, or bottom side, or center it all. And I find that to be extremely helpful uh, as I'm building up these larger shapes from smaller shapes. So this display stand really boils down to only a few types of components that I just need to repeat a couple of times. There's the singular uh, square top that will lock everything together, as well as the four walls that essentially makes it the same style of box um, that I'm imitating and riffing off of. And then uh, basically I need these inner walls that will interlock, that will be slightly different, won't be as tall. Um, so I'm really only designing about five different things here. And there's a big part of this process where I'm just staring at the monitor and thinking, do I have this right? If I make one change here, on this orientation, what does that mean for how this piece is going to fit with the interlocking piece on another orientation? Little changes, little dimensional changes on one piece have rippling effects, and that's just a byproduct of doing everything this bootstrap manual way as opposed to designing it in 3D. You know, I started off with the design thinking that I was gonna try to evoke a heat sink look, and I'm starting to see that effect now. In fact, these flat pieces, they almost look like RAM modules with heat sinks at the top. It's kind of neat. Okay, at some point I have to stop futzing with it and just laser cut it to see how it's gonna fit together. So let's head over to the Glowforge and do our first test cut. Okay, very excited. Got our first test cut pieces here and um, ready to see if it actually fits together. So as you can see from the overhead cam, this is that five inch by five inch and actually had to reduce it by an eighth of an inch um, for it to all 
make sense and interlock the right way. Uh, but this is the equivalent of that top bracket, this frame of the box, just a little bigger. Uh, that was fun to design. And then I might as well cut out uh, my little base. And this base I'm thinking can be different materials in the future. Uh, right now it's frosted acrylic, but it could be clear acrylic, can also maybe be solid with some holes inside. Lots of different options here. Uh, and here essentially are the four walls, which I'm pretty sure will interlock together. Now I'm not even gonna take the, um, the plastic covering off yet. I just wanna see if they even fit. And it looks like, and it looks like, yes, they do, huzzah! Okay, so this is the outer frame, inch and a half tall, and you can see it has a lot of similar characteristics as this box design, I really like this. Um, this kind of angle here. And let's see if this topper fits over here. It does. Very cool. So if I wanted to keep it basically like this box, put a light in here, you know, this would serve as a very basic display, but wouldn't have the kind of heat sink look I'm going for. So the tricky part is gonna be if these work. All right, let's see if these, oh no. Okay, I can tell I messed this up already. I am missing a slot here. They interlink with each other just fine, but not with that outer frame. I'm gonna do a tweak and cut some more pieces out. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. That was quick for you, uh, not so quick for me. These, no good, I made a mistake. Thank goodness I only cut a few of these out and I think these will work. So first of all, let's test to see if they interlock with each other and they do, no problem. And then let's see if they interlock with the outer frame. Yes, oh, very good. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to get a sense of what I'm trying to do here. I'm gonna have Essentially, you count them, 20 of these going on each axis. So basically 20 will go here, 20 pieces will go here. They will all interlock uh, using this slot joint. And then by the end of it, you'll see uh, a row of these accents on all four sides. And I also recessed where the inner lock, so I gave myself a little bit of a cavity on the inside uh, to put the lights, and then this bracket will go on top, and hopefully it'll look very cool. So design is pretty good. I'm gonna maybe increase the thickness by 0.05 for the curve of the laser, so they'll fit a little bit better, uh, and then I gotta cut out like 40 of these pieces, and we'll get to assembly. All right, so after a little bit of assembly, which was fun, and then I adhered everything together just with some Scion Acrylate, although I could have used some acrylic cement in this case, it is completed. And I am digging this effect. It, it looks almost like something out of uh, the original Christopher Reeve Superman's Fortress of Solitude. I love this layered uh, acrylic. I did use a mix of frosted and clear. And as I was putting it together, I realized that it would look kind of cool upside down as well. That's where you really get that heat sink look. Um, I did off camera uh, put in my LED lights. So if I take off this top here, uh, you can see I, I intricately laid out all the LEDs and I had it not only illuminate outward and upward where I'm gonna be putting figures on here, but also down as well to get the light through as many of these sides as possible. Uh, just some cheap LED uh, light strips, uh, had it wired out here and now we're gonna get 
a moment of truth. So I put this here, I put in a little bit of a, a riser so I can uh, elevate above the LEDs. Uh, and I'm gonna plug it in. Here it goes, the moment of truth. Oh, it's probably blowing out the camera right now with this exposure, but yeah, it gets pretty bright. And wow, okay, I really dig, really dig how the light is bleeding through the edges here. Um, let's try some test shots with some figures on top. And then also something I decided to do was as we turn this off so it doesn't blow out the camera, uh, laser cut some additional pieces I can use as base plates so light can bleed through. So this is just, uh, looks like a grill, you know, a floor panel that kind of a figure on top of and just spray painted some clear acrylic with some black spray paint. Uh, did the same with one of these toppers, tried a couple different versions. And so we have a bunch of options. And now comes my favorite part, which is to use this in some toy photography. So let's wrap this video with some of that. Thank you so much for following along with this experiment. Again, it's just more exercises in Illustrator and laser cutting. I'll share the files for this uh, in the links below and it's exactly the type of project that I want to now immediately building this one immediately work on the next version I can think of maybe something taller smaller uh, this ended up using about three sheets of the 12 by 20 Glowforge acrylic but a fun build again thank you so much and let's get to some photography see you next time